Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. We're going to have a little bit of a shortened version today, and I don't think you'll be upset when you find out what I'm going to be doing. So I'm heading to the airport today to catch a plane to New York to go to a big uh, textile fabric trade show, and I'm going to be buying fabrics for fall and winter, so you know, how bad can that be? So in about 30 minutes, we're going to be wrapping things up, and uh, we're going to have a, just a little bit of a shortened version today. So, do you remember last week, uh, I showed a couple of garments, the splice top and the San Diego tunic in a wonderful watercolor print fabric. Well, we had ordered a lot of fabric and we sold out of it very quickly. Thank you very much for that. It was very successful for us. And so I have the two garments here. I have the splice top and the San Diego tunic. And for the first time, I'm going to be selling these garments the finished garments. So the splice is a size medium and the San Diego is a size small. I'm selling the splice for $135 plus some shipping and $185 for the San Diego tunic plus a little shipping. So if you are interested in either one of these garments, and you think they will look good on you and fit you and all of that, I, I can tell you they're nicely made, then email me at linda at sewingworkshop.com and the first person who emails me will get the garments, will ship them right out to you, and we will send you a PayPal invoice and you can pay me in that way. So, splice, size medium, 135, San Diego, size small, 185. We'll add a little bit of shipping to it. And it's yours. So, first time you've ever tried this, we'll see how it goes. But to, uh, today is talking about the willow blouse. This is July, and the willow blouse was introduced the 1st of July to our So Confident members, and now it's time to show the willow blouse for our entire customer base. And I'm wearing the willow blouse actually in the original kit, which is a beautiful light sateen cotton. We happen to be out of these kits, which for us is great, for you not maybe so great. But um, So I'm going to be showing you some other fabrics today that you can use to make this blouse. Uh, and then I'm also going to show you how I'm going to style it. And really, it's mostly about pants, even though we've talked about skirts and other things. But uh, I'm going to show you the kinds of profile of pants that I like with this garment and some fabrics for both the top and the bottom. So um, let's just look at the willow top here a minute. First of all, this is in handkerchief weight linen. And I washed this linen and it took the, the little finish of, of um, crispness off of this and it's really soft. And yes, it wrinkles. I didn't really press this before I put it on the dress form and I had worn it a couple of times. And you can see it has that just light rumpled look to it, which I really like. So, you know, you don't have to worry too much about the fact that it's super, super, super wrinkly. But I'm pretty crazy about this garment, both for summer and spring and even early fall with a short sleeve. And then we have a long sleeve version in the pattern if you want to wear it other times of the year in cooler weather. Uh, we haven't made a long sleeve version yet. I'll, it's just too hot, I guess, to think about long sleeves. But uh, the samples that we have are, have all been the short sleeve. But you can see that it has this nice drape that's actually sewn together by virtue of this buttonhole. And this button is placed, of course, where it falls on you after you have installed this little loop and button. So there's the button and the loop. And you know we use our ballpoint bodkin to make the loops so we can get really skinny loops. I've demonstrated this a couple of times on Facebook Live and in other videos, so I probably don't need to do that again. But this is the best tool to use to get a really skinny loop. All of that about loops and tubes and all of that is in a tutorial called Loops and Tubes. And so if you're interested in that, that's going to be on sale this week. Then I, in the video, which is also a class, you can uh, sign up for the monthly class, the Willow Blouse Workshop. 
And I show you how to mold this collar so that it lies really nicely and has a nice roll to it. I show you how to put in a, a sleeve in a woven. And notice that it has this nice vent opening, kind of a, a V-shaped vent opening at the side on the right side. And then the left side is closed, but it does have a flare to it. Now, my friend Ann didn't like that flare. And she just straightened that out and liked it a lot better, and you can do that too. But that flare is built into the pattern and technically is designed to be that way. So the back is straight across. And the front has this asymmetry to it. And then, of course, the pleat is a soft pleat that goes almost all the way down. Um, one of my goals last weekend was to make a version that's short and straight across, but I played tennis instead. So I'm sorry, I didn't get it made, but that is my intention. You know, we're headed to Chateau du Mans in France in about a month, and I intend to make a nice white shirt, shorter and cropped, I guess I'll put it that way, without the slit and without the flare, and we'll see how that looks, and I'll wear that with my Hudson pants and uh, maybe my Picasso pants because it's hot in France as we understand it. So this is the willow. Now, this is the one that I like the fit of, and this happens to be a small on me. I actually have a medium on in the sample, which looks fine too. It's maybe a little bit bigger than I would normally wear it because I, I like the fit of the small better, but you can see that you know there's quite a bit of ease in this pattern. You want to make sure that this pleat is not spread. This is not meant to be bust fullness. So if you need to add bust darts or bust fullness without a bust dart, that's fine. This garment, it's, it's easy to do on this, but don't plan on making this pleat part of your fit. So when you are measuring the pattern from under the, bu uh, the bust, across the bust, under the arm side, make sure that the pattern piece is pleated so that you're measuring over that, that all of that is out of there. But we do have finished measurements on the pattern, and you can always refer to that as well. You want, some, you want a fair amount of ease in this. Four or five inches across the bust, to me, is minimum. And then, of course, you want to fit your shoulders. Now, the one on the small fits me just a little bit better on the shoulder. But this is a sleeve that sets in and should sit on the shoulder. All right, so I am wearing this with getaway jeans. And I haven't worn the getaway jeans yet too much this summer. But I have them on, and you can see that they're very trim. I'm going to get another pair out here, excuse me, just for a second, and hang them up so you can really see the details of them. Um, but it's, you can see that it's a tapered leg, and the roll at the bottom is part of the design of this pant. And in fact, we have a little technique. I'm going to bring this towards the camera so you don't have to move, Erin, where we actually cover the seam allowance through, through the, um, the cuff so that that looks nice. And there's wonderful top stitching on this. We have a, uh, a fantastic technique for installing this uh, fly front zipper. The technique is the one that we've learned from Sandra Betsina in her power sewing book. And we use this for two or three of our patterns. It's, it's a wonderful technique because this top stitching doesn't have anything to do with holding the zipper in place. All, the zipper has been completely installed and is secure before you even do this. And usually in traditional methods of making a fly front, the top stitching is key to holding the zipper in place, but you don't have to worry about that anymore. Pockets, we do have these little uh, rivets. We don't have them on our website, I don't think. It's possible that we do, Bet Betsy can check. But I like the little addition of rivets. And if we don't have them on our website, it's something you can just email us about and we'll, we'll take care of that for you. So the front is very traditional jean-like, other than also this dart. Now this is a dart that's simply a design feature. It is not a fitting dart. It's just a nice, quirky little element that I really liked, so we added it. But the back is very different. The back has elastic across the back and then a yoke. So here are some fitting opportunities for you. As a matter of fact, I've had to raise the back to make it fit me just a little bit better. I've raised it about a half an inch and it just feels better. So that's the back. 
and this is the front. And we do encourage you to do top stitching on these getaway jeans using a little heavier thread. This has red top stitching. You can buy the traditional jean golden yellow color as well. And we even have some of those spools, I believe, that you can also ask us about. So the getaway jean was the first to come to mind when Aaron and I were thinking about uh, styling this shirt. Make it really casual for, for, uh, for fun, for summer, for fall, for winter, whatever, but that slim profile is what we're pretty much looking for uh, for most of the pants profiles. Well, that brought up then the idea of the Madrid pants, which also have a slim profile, slimmer legs. Now this pan has a different shape to it in that there are fitting seams down the center of each leg, side seams, more seams down the center of the back. So there are like, let's see, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there are eight seams. So this is a, a, a pant that you can really play with on the fitting because you've got lots of places to do some shaping and some fitting. One of the things I like about this pant is that it has this back section. There's a horizontal seam right here and then a vertical seam so that you can install what looks like a double welt which it is basically, but there's a zipper inside of here. And the zipper actually zips up. And you can see that I've used a little bit of contrasting cotton in a plaid to just make that more of a fun look. This fabric had this stripe on it. It was already printed, this is a denim. But I thought, oh, for those of you who paint and stencil, uh, this would be a fun thing to do to pants is to add that painted element to the bottom of the legs. This does have a shaped contour waistband to it, so that's another uh, nice way to fit. It just kind of sits on your high hip, and it can be faced in a similar fabric, the same fabric as you used on the welts for the zipper. So that's the Madrid. So the Getaway and the Madrid are two styles that look really good in denim, light denims, and other fabrics as well. They can have stretch in them or not have stretch. It depend, depends on your comfort level and what you like to wear. Then I pulled out some other pants patterns that I think look really good with the willow. So this is the Chesney pant, and this time in a print. Now, interestingly enough, the base fabric of this has a denim-like texture to it, but it's been overprinted with a floral. We don't have this fabric anymore, so don't get excited about it, but the idea of adding a print to the bottom of a white shirt is a great idea. Elastic waist, pockets, and not super skinny, but definitely a little tapered. So the profile really works with the willow. And it's a little bit shorter too. The fuller you get, sometimes the shorter I go. I made sure that I did not wear my blush pink Hudson pants this week. I think it's like the first week I've taken off from wearing those pants in like 10 weeks. So I just pulled out another color of my Hudson pants. And these, this is again a lightweight linen in a cross-eyed linen, but it has the tapered leg as well. It has two darts in the front starting at the hem, two darts in the back. So four darts create the, the shape of the leg and bring it in like a lantern shape. You can add pockets to the Hudson. It doesn't come with pockets, but you can add the same pockets from any one of our patterns to the side seam of the Hudson. And this has been my go-to pants pattern for a long time. Uh, I've been th I go through cycles of favorite pants. I'm currently in a Hudson pant cycle. They're so comfortable and, and that they're slim, but they're super comfortable, and they're not so tight that I can't move and I'm uncomfortable. So I think the Hudson's work really well also. You know, with a pale color or a strong color, really wouldn't matter. You could make this pant in a lightweight denim or a chambray, so you get the look of a jean. 
Then you can go into the knit category of things and pull out your Ponte knit, check out the Ponte knits, and make some Helix pants. Now these are a slim pant, darts, front and back, and then the waist has an inch and a half elastic exposed on the inside of the waist. And we sell a very nice knit elastic that's soft. It's not scratchy. I'm so sensitive to scratchy things. So I'm always looking for things that don't scratch me. But I like this waistband treatment a lot. And the profile of this is also perfect for what's happening with the volume of this willow. It's interesting about the, the willow. I consider it a, a fitted blouse. But the fact that it has this drape in the front does add the sort of interest and I, I guess I call it volume, that I don't want a lot of action going on below. So that's why I'm looking towards slimmer profiles and simple pants. Now Betsy uh, has, of course, uh, thrown out a couple of ideas for skirts. The Oasis skirt and the Sandy, uh, San, Sandra Bettina skirt are two slim, fairly straight skirt designs that would also look good with this. But I'm more of a pant girl, and um, I say that, and I've, I've just made two skirts, but uh, just made two Edgewater skirts. But at any rate, uh, I do think that those two profiles of skirts also work if you are a skirt person. Now, similar to the Helix is the pencil pants. And they are very similar. Leg width is similar. I can hardly tell the difference. They are a little bit slimmer through the thigh, but the waistband is totally different. So whereas on the Helix, the elastic is exposed, this time it's hidden. And this particular technique came from a pair of Eileen Fisher ready-to-wear pants that I saw in the store, and I liked it. So this is a one and a half inch casing. So it's two-sided. But the elastic in here is only half of that. It's three quarters of an inch. Also a knit elastic, which means it has extra stretch and it's soft and, and not very thick. And that has been adhered to the back half of the waistband with a zigzag stitch. So the elastic that's in there is not floating. It is attached. It's cut about an inch smaller than the casing, so you give it a little bit of a stretch when you are applying it. But this is a really nice, comfortable and uh, waistband treatment. And if you are someone who tucks in, you know, that chic little one-tuck thing or everything, then this, this looks good. Looks really nice. But the, it also has darts in the back, not in the front. So a little bit trimmer, leg width very, very similar to the Helix. Both of these pants, I think, look really good in knits. This one is a Ponte knit. This is a Ponte, but a lightweight Ponte. So you can see it's a little bit drapier than the Ponte. Um, you can make these in wovens, but they need to have a lot of stretch, as much stretch as you can get in the woven. 25% uh, is what we recommend. And the way that you determine that is you hold your fingers or your hands four inches apart on the cross grain of the knit and you pull it and if it pulls to an inch to five inches then it's 25 percent but I really think you're looking for that at the minimum and you even want more then Aaron and Alex both love the Maison jogger and this is where I feel like I'm older because I said to Aaron yesterday you know I don't know about this band at the bottom doesn't that make that too athleisure too casual oh no you know I'm I'm crazy she told me I was crazy okay so I'm crazy and I know that my daughter would feel the same way so we pulled out the Mason pants and actually when we we put the willow blouse on top of this it looked really good <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> I also know of people, I'm sorry about my voice, <clears throat> who have not done the band at the bottom. 
and you can just make this a straight slim leg. That's a possibility as well. Uh, but this is a one and a half inch casing that has one and a half inch elastic in it, but it also has a drawstring that comes out through two buttonholes at the center front. And that's roaming loose within the waistband. Some nice pockets to it, but this is just the, the best jogger pattern you'll ever find. And you don't have to wear it with the willow, you can wear it with anything, but this is, these are so, so comfortable. This is in a, uh, a cotton knit that doesn't even have spandex in it. If it has a little bit of spandex, of course it has more recovery. If it doesn't have spandex, it may not have much recovery, but on the other hand, you know, you can see that the, it's not particularly poked out in the knees and has worked out really great. So, Mason. So just as a review, we've got getaway jeans. We have Madrid pants made in denim or other fabrics. We have the Chesney pants, the Hudson pants, the Mason pants, Helix pants, and pencil pants. That's a lot of pants. If you have one of each of those pants in your repertoire, you have the patterns, or you've made them up in your closet, you're pretty much covered for what you need for pants to wear with a lot of our patterns, and particularly the willow blouse. Do we have any questions that we want to? We do. Um, how do you like to wear your Hudson's? What length do you like them? I wear my Hudson's above my ankle by at least an inch. I like them on the short side. Now, a lot of people just make them the regular length, and they love that, and that's fine. But for me, I like them a little bit on the short side. Has anyone made the getaway jeans high rise? Uh, um, I haven't seen that, um, but uh, it was, certainly could be done, no question. I just haven't seen it. And I wouldn't say they're low rise. I, no, I'd they're not low rise. They're mid, right at the waist. Kind of a mid, are they mid rise or, or do you think well, they are? Well, the these, these are right at my waist. Okay. So, yeah. I guess it depends on how high rise they want. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, are you talking about four inches above the waist or uh, at the waist? <laughs> Yeah, these are at the waist. <laughs> How does the willow look on full-figured women? You know, I have seen this on a number of people who've posted that I think it's a super flattering garment on any size. I, I th and I think it also depends on the fabric. You want a fabric that has a nice flow to the drape. Nothing too heavy, nothing too stiff. That's where you get into trouble, I think, if this is not a nice drapey fabric. What size are the kits for? I'm always afraid to order kits because I may need extra fabric. The kits that we put together are always built for the largest size of the pattern, the XXL. If you need additional fabric beyond the XXL, you need to contact us and we can customize a kit or sell you just the yardage separately. What is the best way to adjust for a full calf in a skinnier pant? A full what now? Full calf. A full calf. You know, um, there is a very particular uh, alteration for that that actually has you move the a section out. Um, that's something that I could put together and uh, talk about on uh, one of our Q&As sometime or something. But the book that I've seen that in is the pattern and fitting alteration book. It's a big volume of fitting alterations. Judith Raspan is one of the authors of it. There are two other authors, Elizabeth somebody, Leahy or something like that and another name. And that's a real go-to alteration book that I use a lot. Um, it's more than just shaping the leg. There's, there's, a diff there's a way to cut out sections and actually move them for that. Can the willow be made into a dress? Well, that is a good question, and we think so, but we haven't done it. We're waiting on Samantha to do it, uh, and maybe she will, but I think it would make a fabulous dress, but I just haven't done it yet. This, fab this pattern's only been out for two weeks, and I'm getting ready to do a short one, and I haven't really gotten into the idea of doing a long one yet, but boy, I think it's going to be a fantastic dress. There are lengthened and shortened lines on the pattern. I would just use those and take it straight down. Can you think of anything else you would do with it in terms of a dress? Like any other shaping or anything? I, you know, you might take a look at this mm -hmm. left side seam and make sure that that doesn't flare out too much. You might 
want to keep the same circumference. I'm and not then, sure about that. Mm -hmm. I'd have to take a look at that. But yeah, I don't know why it wouldn't make a great dress. Yeah, I think it would be great. Just have yeah. to lower that, yeah. uh, the slit. Um, could you avoid the below waist bulge on the top by lifting up the fold over part a little? Uh, are you talking about right here? I think so. Is yeah, that the I don't waist? know how you do that. I think that's a fa somewhat of a fabric issue, but I don't know. It doesn't bother me. Does it look bad? No. Mm -mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Probably just depends on the, the drape of the fabric. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I, think it, I think that's Samantha saying she'd do it. I'm not sure. <laughs> yes. Okay. Doing the dress. <laughs> Is she doing the dress? She said, I'll do it. <laughs> Great. All right. We'll think. see it in France. That's a challenge. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, We're getting ready to do our Fractured in France uh, jacket class workshop in, at Chateau de Mont, France. And Samantha is my co teacher. So. Um, if you have full lines around the shoulder neck area of the shirt, how would you adjust the pattern to eliminate those folds? That Chances are that's a shoulder adjustment. If there are something like this, then you can either wear a shoulder pad or you can do a slope shoulder adjustment. So I think on you it's just a tad big. There. Yeah, this, this mm -hmm. blouse is mm -hmm. just one size too big for mm -hmm. me. And so if I stand up, do they go away now? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> that doesn't happen on the small. No. <laughs> I should have put shoulder pads on. We have great shoulder pads, by the way. And they're back yes. in stock. In fact, I see one is it's coming off here. I'll just pull it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're nice because they're not too bulky. Yeah, they're, they're not. Just a nice, soft shoulder this is pad. A, these are our shoulder pads. They're little Giorgio Armani shoulder pads. Just enough. <laughs> Uh, that's going to be a too yeah. much of a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I don't see any other questions. Okay. Should we get some Let's talk about some fabrics. Yeah. Um, all right. So we have uh, some bottom weight fabrics for um, the jeans, the getaway jeans, or the Madrid pants. And we start with this denim, which is a really nice denim. has a nice soft hand to it. So it's not stiff, stiff denim like so many denims. And it is all 100% organic cotton. This is a, it's blue, but it's pretty black too. So it's very dark, which I like. And then we like the idea of a crinkled, if you don't like to mess with uh, ironing, you can buy a pre-crinkled uh, <laughs> piece of fabric for your willow blouse. And this is 100% linen and it is pre-crinkled, and those crinkles stay in there. Don't try to press them out. They're supposed to be there. We love this tone-on-tone -tone linen. I just, I'm crazy about this. This would make really a willow blouse or pants, like the Hudson pants, the Chesney pants, something like that. But this is a doby weave that has, that's not the right word. See, I've forgotten my uh, K-State textiles class. Oh my gosh, somebody's gonna come email me with what this is. Um, it's just a card weave, but it has some little edges of raw of, of threads. I can't think of the name of what that weave is. But anyway, real pretty, beautiful, beautiful silver gray. Now this is a very unusual fabric. And actually, um, I cut one of these out. I haven't completed it yet. But this is a willow, going to be a willow blouse. And this is viscose batiste. And I have never seen that before. Viscose meaning rayon. So a rayon batiste is not cotton. You can see how incredibly drapey it is. So if you want a beautiful, beautiful white blouse that's easy to take care of, would wash beautifully, looks like silk, looks like silk broadcloth, but it's not. It's rayon. So it's cool, comfortable, soft, and super nice. This is the same fabric, obviously, as this, just a little deeper color, and it's a really interesting color. It has that sort of musk overtone to it. Uh, it's gray, but it does have a, a, a gray, a brownish cast to it. Now, this is the same fabric as the willow blouse on the dress form. So when you get it, it it's a little bit crisp, but after you wash it, it's super soft. 
Now this is a linen and tencel, and it has the flavor of tencel in that it has, it's just super, super drapey. This is an even plaid, so this is not as difficult to sew as you might imagine, because it's easy to match. But put this on this willow, and you get this interesting play of, of change of direction of the plaid. I think it would be really interesting on this willow blouse. Let me start down here. This is a great bottom weight, lots of stretch, but the stretch is on the vertical. So you have to cut out on the cross grain on this. Remember that, I've made that mistake a time or two. And I can only move up and down, I can't move sideways. So at any rate, this is, we don't know what this is exactly. I'm, sus I'm suspecting that it is cotton and rayon, maybe has a little poly in it, but this is a wonderful color and would make super nice, easy care, super comfortable getaway jeans or Madrid pants. Now this is one of my favorite fabrics that's in the store right now. We have it in a couple of colors. This is polyester, so of course that doesn't wrinkle, but it has a weave to it. We have more of this, by the way. This is just one bolt of it. But there's a wonderful weave to it, kind of a horizontal, raised, file-like texture to it with a weave in between. I think it's very interesting and super, super drapey. So I'd make a gorgeous willow blouse or any blouse. This is an all cotton and lycra. Wouldn't this make a fantastic pair of pants? This would be the getaway jeans, the Madrid pants, the Chesney pants, the Hudson pants. Fantastic. A little bit of stretch, just enough, but really nice motif. Actually has a, a fuchsia section to it, a little bit of gray, but mostly the oranges and reds. Now this handkerchief linen is the very same, the very same as this. So when washed, it would also be soft. Very pale pink. This is all linen with a wonderful contemporary sketchy motif to it. I don't think those are anything other than lines, doodles. Mm -hmm. And this one has a lot of, of uh, crinkle texture to it, which is disguised a little bit by the motif of the pointillist kind of design to it. But all linen would make a great top or pants. This would make pants as well. So we've got a combination here of things that you can make bottoms, tops, and good combinations for your willow blouse and whatever pants you decide to make. Okay, so there we go. All right, so what's on sale today is all of these fabrics. I think there are 12 or 13 of them. Lots of patterns. We have the willow blouse, the Hudson pants, the getaway pants, Madrid pants, Chesney pants, Helix pants, pencil pants, Maison pants. That's eight patterns on sale this week. We have two tutorials on sale, the DIY pants fitting tutorial, which takes you through the process of measuring yourself and making some basic adjustments, and then our loops and tubes tutorial of how to do all those great loops. So, okay. all right, I'm sorry it's short, but um, I'll have good things to report to you next Tuesday when I see you again. <laughs>